loved working with him. And I think I was the only person years ago who did a film with Otto Preminger who adored working with Otto Preminger. So I seem to be sort of quite good at those sort of people. I shout back loudly. <laughs> he's, he's one of the rudest men. Otto? Hmm. Well, he wasn't rude to me. He's a bully, you see, and if you bully bullies back, they sit up and listen and they're nice to you. I mean, it isn't much fun watching them bully the people who aren't strong enough to bully them back. I know, but um, in the end, you just have to sort of fight for yourself, really. It sounds awfully selfish, but, I mean, I became a great friend of Otto's. I've, I knew him for years. You know, I was very sorry when he died the other day. Um, and I think, I mean, in some ways, it's quite a challenge. You know, if somebody's nice to you all the time, and everything you do, they say, oh, Lala, that's wonderful, brilliant, lovely. You never actually trust them, because you know some of it must be absolutely dreadful. It's bound to be. Whereas with someone like Otto, as he says, everything's dreadful all the time. When he says something's wonderful, you know it must be, because it's such a sort of rare thing for him to utter. Did you, did you marry um, without thinking too much about it? Um... Because did, did you meet Tom while you were doing Doctor Who? Yes. Mm. And actually, I met him while I was doing Doctor Who. Oh, I see what you mean. I, I hadn't met him before. No. Yes, I met him while I was, I was doing Doctor Who. <laughs> did you um, first encounter him on, on this is Doctor a crossword. Who? <laughs> I first encountered him on Doctor Who, yeah. Yes. Um, but I didn't... I mean, I did the programme for about two years or something, and then I got married to him after I'd left. I think everybody's rather surprised because we spent about six months just before I left the programme not actually speaking to each other at all. He wouldn't talk to me and he wouldn't even look at me when we were working. He'd sort of look somewhere above my left eyebrow. And it was all exceedingly difficult and all the actors were sort of saying, oh, poor Lala, it's so difficult. And Tom was saying, poor me, it's so difficult working with her. So um, you, didn't, you didn't like each other? Um, well, we liked each other at the beginning and we loathed each other in the middle and we got married at the end. I don't know if that's a recipe for success, but it only lasted about a year and a half, so it can't be. What went wrong? Um, I did the Times crossword better than he did. <laughs> no, that's why we got married, because he was quite impressed by that. Um, you, mean, you mean he married you because you were good at crosswords? Well, I mean, one marries people for all sorts of reasons, but I, I, I do like sort of... I read an awful lot, and I like words, and I suppose liking crosswords is part of that. Um, I don't know. God knows why he married me. We got on frightfully well. Isn't that why people get married? And mm -hmm. then we decided we didn't very much, and so we stopped being married, which seemed a good, good idea, really. Was that, was that traumatic, or was no, it civilised? No, It was frightfully civilised. Was it? Hmm. Well, it's very sensible, isn't it? I mean, if it works wonderfully for a year and a half, and then it doesn't, you stop. Why bother to marry, then? Because it was working wonderfully, and one's full of optimism in this life. Do you want to marry again? Why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> um, just well, if the right you. person asks me, I'll think about it, yeah. Is it something, something that you, you need, or something that no. you want? It's not something I'm... I mean, I'm not sort of scouting around looking for someone to marry. I'm very happy on my own at the moment, but, um... Uh, it's not something I'm obsessed with at all. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of work to do, and... Um... I, these things sort of change overnight, don't they? It's silly to say I'll never marry anybody again, because then you'll look an awful fool when you do. Are you... are, are you... obsessed at all with the... the prospect of having children, or not having children? No. You, do, you want, do you want to be a mum? I'm deeply unobsessed with the whole thought of it. Um, yes, I mean, I suppose one ought to do these things, really. It'd be probably rather sad not to in the ought end. Ought to? Well, I mean, it's sort of interesting, isn't it? I, it's awfully difficult to think of in, in the abstract. If you, happen to, if you happen to be madly in love with someone, and whether you marry them or not seems to me to be fairly immaterial, but um, it's definitely difficult to discuss children in the abstract. If it's somebody you love and you want to have them with, then I suppose mm. you think about having them. No, it's just, that, it's just that a lot of ladies, when they get to 35, mm. <laughs> it, that's something that they start thinking about, isn't it? Well, they think, I'll, my God, how much... How I'm not much 35 longer? quite, so I'll, I'll think about it when I start. <laughs> um, well, it's got a bit longer with all these sort of things that can stick into you and find out if you're healthy and all that now. don't have to do it quite at 35. My mother was 40 when she had me and 42 when she had my brother, so I've got a bit of time. Oh, plenty of time. If it runs in the family doing these things yeah. like... You've got to find the right chap, though. Yeah, that would be a help. Mm. Mm. If you... In, in Doctor Who at the risk of being boring, you can go back into the past, you can go f forward mm. into the future. If you get, went back into the past, would you, would you want to change anything that you've, you've done? Were there d decisions that you made that you would now like to, to have uh, no. arrived differently? Not really, no. I think one should just get on with it and do things for the future and not fuss around about what one did or didn't do right in the past, mm. really. I mean, I haven't fortunately made any such vast errors 
but I'm in a great state about wishing I hadn't done. So, I mean, I'd much rather worry about what I do next. Really. What, what, well, what does the future hold, or what would you like it to, to um, hold? I haven't the foggiest idea. I really don't know. I mean, one's always being asked as an actor sort of what parts you want to play and things like that. It seems to me that that's a recipe for miserable <coughs> frustration because no one's going to offer them to you. In any case, half the time you're offered things that haven't been written yet. So, I mean, you know, you, things in the future haven't actually been done. Mm. So I don't... I really don't know. I'm, I'm awfully lucky. I mean, my life's awfully nice. And, um... I wait to see what happens. You, you should be... You should be terribly frustrated that all Why these I be? parts aren't rolling in and no, that... I'm not. No? No, I'm not. I mean, I think um, one of the difficult things in this country is after being in a programme like Doctor Who, you are thought of as the Doctor Who girl permanently. I don't know. I, I think the other people who've been in it have felt more or less the same way. And you, you cease then to be offered the kind of parts you were before. I mean, I was always doing sort of classic things. and I mean, I was actually, amazingly enough, offered Ophelia in the BBC Hamlet in the middle of two Doctor Who series, which was almost unheard of, which I did. With, and you took it. I certainly did, like a shot, yeah. Um, but I went up for the audition for it, never considering for a moment that I'd get it, because I, it doesn't work in this country that you can, I don't think, that you can jump from one sort of, what they, they think of as one sort of actress to a, another, but very easily. And I, that's been quite difficult since I've left up to him. Mm. And I but, suppose, I mean, you know, if I didn't have the other job and I wasn't an illustrator as well and everything, I might have worried about it more. The awful thing is that... In some ways, the awful thing is doing two jobs. You worry less about the other, mm. you know. Mm. Are you rich? No, I wish I was. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Mm. Uh, are Very you, nosy you... question, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to follow that up by, are you comfortable? You probably asked me that as well. well. I don't know what comfortable means. It means having... Would you have to worry about the, about the next, the next um, job? Yes, up to a point, yeah. So you're, although you're aristocracy, you're not sort of wealthy yes, aristocracy. Yes, I love this idea that people think if your father's got some sort of title, it must mean you're rolling in money. It usually means you're rolling and sort of having paid vast death duties and general <laughs> horrors of... <laughs> I, I want to ask Lala something. I want to ask where you get your toughness from, because you are... I mean, you're, you're, I, mean I mean that in a complimentary sense. You're, you're tough-minded. You don't seem to wamble around having doubts about things. Is that from your father? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Um... I do have terrible doubts about all sorts of things, but I'm not going to go on midweek and tell everybody about them. Ah, so you're, <laughs> <laughs> you're, no, you're mean, wambly yet, yet uh, disingenuous. Well, I'd, uh, I don't really... I mean, I don't have doubts about sort of fiddly little things. I have doubts sometimes about... I mean, I don't have doubts about things that may never happen, about sort of hypothetical problems, really. I can't see the point of worrying about what I should have done or what I might do if such and such happened. I mean, if some major problem comes up, like I'm offered a part and I don't know whether I want to do it or ought to do something, then I'll have doubts and worry about that. But um... Is it a front? Of course this... it's a front, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we've all got to have fronts. <laughs> but, I mean, the, from, from what, you, what you said then, it sounds like that you don't worry about anything. If you're not worried about things that have happened in the past, you're not worried about things that aren't... aren't well, I don't happening. worry about hypothetical problems. I worry... What are you worried about at the moment? Um... I'm not. I'm busy concentrating on talking to you, John. Oh. What will you worry about tomorrow? Well, that's tomorrow, so I'm not going to worry no. about it today. <laughs> that, Do you worry about the fact that you that you that you once <sighs> appeared um, in a in a sort of slightly naughty magazine? Um, well, you didn't. Appear, no, I didn't. But there were, so but I there don't were worry pictures, about it. sort of those sort of pictures. Do you want the boring story? Help! Help! <laughs> save me! Save me! Saved by the door. My friends are gone. No, I it? don't. I want to answer it, too, because otherwise everybody will think maybe I am worried about it. Um, I mean, to cut a very long story extremely short, it was simply a, a film I did ages ago that was then hacked up and a double was put in for me and a double was put in for another actor who was in it with me. And it was turned into a sort of, I mean, I don't know what, a vaguely sort of pornographic movie, I suppose, which I never actually saw, but um, that sort of happened. And then, because I was doing Doctor Who, and when I got married to Tom, a certain magazine, whose name I'm probably not allowed to mention, but anyway, um, splashed about five pages worth of photographs, lots of which were me fully clothed, and lots of which were somebody else saying that it was me. Um, unfortunately, at that particular point, I was, I was working enough to afford the misery of having to sue somebody over it, which I did. I sued the editor and the director of the film and everybody else, and it took three years, and it was sure hell, but... Um, hell! Help! Save me! Save me! I am malfunction! 
That's the editor of the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> They've fed a Dalek in. Hello, Dalek. What are you doing here? I have been neutralised. I am powerless. I have a malfunction. Why? What's going to happen to you? I am going to be sold in the woman's hour auction. I can no longer exterminate. <laughs> this is a Dalek, I take it, which is going to be auctioned in the woman's hour Red Cross Sudan appeal and which has forced its way into this studio. Um, Dalek, um, can you stop being a Dalek a minute? Uh, yes. Oh, good heaven. <laughs> a mild-mannered and unassuming chap in a leather jacket called Roy Skelton. Were, were you a real Dal Dalek, or have you just been hired in for the occasion? Um, I'm just uh, a real Dalek. Uh, but w were you a Dalek in Doctor Who? Oh, yes, I was indeed. Have you seen him before, Lana? Certainly, I have. Uh, what, what did he used to do? He used to crouch over a microphone in the corner <laughs> like he is now. Oh, better ask him. Sat behind some little flat somewhere in a quiet little cubby hole with a monitor in front of one and a pair of headphones on and rather out of the, of the way. And did you used to wish you were out there with Lala Ward and all the glamorous people dressed <laughs> oh, as cosmic of, princes? Of course, of course. Because <laughs> you're an actor, aren't you? Yes, indeed. Yes. yes. Did, did you mind being an out-of-vision Dalek actor? Um, no, not at all. I mean, I love doing the Daleks, actually, but um, the only problem with doing voice work like this is, like Lala says, if you're doing a Doctor Who, everybody said, oh, well, you're a Doctor Who person. Mm. You're doing a voice person. And they're doing a voice. They say, oh, you're a voice man. It, it, it becomes... I understood for the first time this morning how much te acting technique there was in being a Dalek, because we were trying to get that synthesizer which does Dalek voices, the Radiophonic Workshop synthesizer hooked up, and they kept on feeding um, Today and Yesterday in Parliament and stuff to it, and we had John Sargent and John Tips and, <laughs> and David Steele and so on all coming through the Dalek voice, and they didn't sound like Daleks. Uh, they... No, there are rules and regulations of what you can and can't do with the voice what, of the Dalek. What, what are the rules? Uh, well, one of the rules is that once you start on a a level you cannot ever drop down once for instance is the dalek mic uh, i think i think you can be a dalek again yeah. um, you what you can't do is something like um, hello i am a dalek it, it just doesn't work once you start you keep on one level or if you get rather hysterical you can rise and of course you go on once you start rising your tone of voice you, you, you have, have to keep to it up, up then. Yes. So, I mean, so if you start going too far up in a long Dalek speech, you, you can get indeed, strangulated. Indeed, indeed. You wish somebody would... Uh, well, I won't go into details, <laughs> but it can get a little sorry. Loosen your clothing for you. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> and um, I know that when Terry Nation developed the Daleks, they were supposed to represent officialdom, bureaucracy, heartless iron faces. They, 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 were, they were a sort of model of cosmic uh, heartless bureaucracy. Did, did you model yourself on any particular... DHSS employee. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean... No, I mean, there were no politicians at that time who were, who were strong enough to be a representative of the Dalek. Uh, at that time? At you, that time, yeah. Who, who would you take as a model if you were being an intergalactic metal monster now? <laughs> Probably, no, I know. <laughs> I, I really don't. I, I can't. I, I don't say, dare I? <laughs> I should say that, that now, I mean, you're not out of work since Michael Grade, the prime time lord, exterminated you all. Um, you do the rainbow rainbow voices on children's yes, ITV, correct, don't yes, you? Yes. In fact, you, you've even made a bit of a corner in arguing with yourself, George and Zippy. You, you do two voices at once, don't you? And well, I, I enjoy that, yes. It's. Um, like doing most voice work, anything that becomes a bit of a challenge, instead of just sitting down in front of a microphone while all the exciting actors are going up and smiling and... Do, do George and Zippy interrupting each other? Well, I'll try. Uh, oh, now, listen, Joey, what, what, you, what, you, what are you... You don't go on like these, because... Well, I say it's all... It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's terribly good, terribly good. John, John Taylor's been involved in a bit of uh, <clears throat> a bit of rivalry and interruption and so on lately. I, I should explain the background to this. It's not as familiar quite as Doctor Who in the Daleks. Once upon a time, there was a story by P.G. Woodhouse about two rivals in love called Rafe Bingham and Arthur Jukes. Bingham and Jukes played one hole of golf have you? <laughs> <laughs> I quite liked it that way anyway. I just briefly wonder I mean, why you don't work in the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. This seems to me to be your spiritual home. Well, no one's offered me a job yet. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to do a few humdrum things like being a Dalek voice maker for Roy Skelton. Uh, but be a Dalek again, why? I 
would like to exterminate woman's hour. <laughs> <laughs> Dalek in a wine vat effect. Nigel, you can choose. You can either do your final poem straight, or you can do it through the Dalek box. Oh, I see. Do it straight. I'll do it straight. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do all the Dalek <laughs> box bits myself. I haven't actually written a final poem today. Oh. No, well, we've been doing the crossword with the pen, you see, so I haven't got it done. But, but I'll make one up just off the top we'll of my head. Make it off the top of your head, yeah. All right, then. The time has come, the poet said, to stretch our imaginations. Listeners of nervous disposition may switch to other stations. John Pittman always seems to get to sit opposite the beauties. Perhaps he and the instant poet ought to exchange their duties. Though I doubt if I'd pin down Lalla Ward, of course, the lady who, but that doesn't take into account the other things she can do. Illustrator, actress, designer, not just a pretty face. Like the TARDIS, there's more inside than the outside offers space. And Roy Skelton's not just a pretty voice, a Dalek as of old. And at both ends of the rainbow, our little pot of gold. I wonder if the kids have found out, they're not usually lacking sense, that the words of George and Zippy come from an alien intelligence. <laughs> Serge Moyes is a snapper-up of unconsidered trifles. The sounds of brandy glasses, briefcase, scaffolding, fireworks, rifles. So if anyone here breaks wind today, he'll do a quick edit and mix, and you'll become a stirring theme in his symphony, Opus 6. <laughs> it strikes me the Barnet Rugby Club, where all the golf hackers are, is not the sort of place to go if you're feeling under par. A 23-mile hole. I suppose you start from the Prestwick Pavilion, and if anyone gets in your way, you have to shout, Four million! <laughs> Nothing more than the underworld. That's hello to a crossword setter. I won't carry on in this vein for long. I can't promise to get any better. There's a whole world of difference between solving a cryptic clue and making it up in the first place for someone else to do. What about instant crossword clues? Composed entirely in rhymes. That's something well in the future. I'll stay behind the times. Hello. The hands of the clock move on. It's getting rather late. We've got to get rid of the guests somehow. OK, then. Exterminate! <laughs> Exterminate! <laughs> Shut up, Dalek. <laughs> That's it for this week. He's right. Thanks, anyway, to Lala Ward and Serge Mose and John Pittman, Val Gilbert, Roy Skelton and John Taylor. Next week, our birthday guest is Professor Alan Peacock. Not giving away a thing, I'll be bound. Good morning. Exterminate woman's hour! Exterminate woman's hour! Midweek was presented by Livy Purvis and produced by Ian Strachan. Uh, Gardener's Question Time follows.